Pittsburgh Brewing has had its ups and downs over the years. There was a time when Icy Light pretty much owned the light beer market around here, and there were times of turmoil as the company struggled to find a way to compete somewhere in between the national brands and craft beer upstarts. Well, now the company is launching a new brand, Blockhouse Brewery, the brainchild of Brian Walsh, who joined Pittsburgh Brewing as CEO about a year ago. And uh, welcome, welcome, welcome back to the region. Well, thank you. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you have a long, you've had a long history here in our region, but you were gone for a few years before you came home, right? Yes, I, I did. Um, I was part of uh, InBev at the time, that, uh, and I managed all the Rolling Rock and Labatt business. Um, so I'm very familiar with Latrobe, uh, particularly the, the production facility, as well as selling and, and living in Western PA. Okay, so then the opportunity comes up, you know, you've got a great gig somewhere, but an opportunity comes up to, to take the helm of Pittsburgh Brewing. Why, why were you attracted to the company? Well, Bill, it's such an iconic brand. Not only just being an iconic brand, it's got great history. Started here in 1861. You know, the building that we're in now on Liberty Ave in Lawrenceville was built in 1875. It's got great history of innovation as well. Mm -hmm. The aluminum can, the pull top can, as well as being the first contract brewer of Jim Cook, uh, the owner and, uh, of Sam Adams back in the mid 80s. I remember doing a story down at Pittsburgh Brewing with Jim Cook, uh, it probably was the, the late 1980s, and this whole brand new phenomenon of what ultimately became the craft beer industry. Yes, Jim, Jim basically was the, the father of the craft brew industry and Pittsburgh Brewing Company was lucky enough to be the brewers of Jim Sam Adams from the start. So it always was able to crank out a really quality product, but Pittsburgh Brewing always seemed to be caught somewhere between the Budweiser's and the Coors's and, and the Sam Adams, and, so, and it always seemed to just be struggling to find the sweet spot to keep this kind of regional brewery alive. What makes you think you've got the recipe? Well, you learn from history. So we know what we want to be when we grow up. So what we want to be is a very strong regional brand tied to the local community of Pittsburgh in the greater Pittsburgh and Western Pennsylvania area. Hmm. And so how do you go about that? What, 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 are, what do you think the steps are going to be to really put uh, puts, uh, puts Pittsburgh Brewing back where it needs to be? Well, first of all, you have to develop, redevelop your partnerships with the wholesalers. Hmm. Remember, in this uh, three-tier, four-tier system in the United States, we can't sell directly to retailers, so we partner with wholesalers. Uh, and we have a very strong wholesaler network here in Pittsburgh. On top of that, you've got to partner with the community. If you really want to be local, you have to be local. And Frank Coonley, who was just on, was a <laughs> wonderful friend. Uh, we are partnered with uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and we have a multi-year deal in which we um, share our packaging and plans and programming, not only with the Pirates and our retailers and, and consumers, but also we're involved in some of their charity work as well. I, I see that you got some special commemorative beer cans here. There's three different three different versions right now of Pittsburgh Pirates Icy Light. Yes. Yeah. So what we do is we start off with the mustard can that was the start of the season. That was when they were wearing some of their mustard hats. Oh, okay. And right, then yeah. you get into the summer. The white can is the summer uh, can for uh, the summer. And then we're going to finish up with the Jolly Rogers. You know, they have the black jerseys. Okay. So this is a chance for folks who really like to carry on with the Pittsburgh Pirates. They have the ability to do that. And of course, we have on ours is our city, our beer, our team. And that's Iron City Light and the Pittsburgh Pirates. All right, really trying to draw that connection together. But then I see here with the Icy Light, the venerable Icy Light that, that goes back gener a generation, you've got a whole new brand uh, to, to go with your new pumpkin ale. Well, what's Blockhouse Brewing all about? Legend has it that there was an ice house on the brewery in the early age. Blockhouse and ice house are synonymous with businesses in the early days. They used to cut the, the rivers in the ponds for ice and then store it back. Okay. So we developed this Blockhouse Brewing to enter into that craft segment, that Jim Cook, Sam Adams segment, because years back, our brewmaster in 1985 Mike Carrada is the same brewmaster we have today. And he wow. has all of those experiences that he brings with us to be able to compete in the craft business. You also have to watch where the consumer dynamics are changing. Hmm. And the craft business now, today, is about eight or nine percent of the total U.S. business. 
expecting to double over the next five to 10 years. So getting into the block house brewing and into the craft segment, we want to show the, our relevancy to our consumers as well as our expertise to the brewing community that we can develop a brand to fit in the craft as well as continue to make world-class liquid of Iron City and Iron City Light to go with the domestic premium business. Yeah, and, and still brewing it within the region. You don't have to be quite like Sam Cook and go uh, five, 600 miles away, right? No, but, yeah. all of our product is brewed in Latrobe, which is the old Rolling Rock Brewery. And the nice part is that half of the brewery workers there are the old Rolling Rock Brewery workers, mm -hmm. and the other half are our own IC like I see, uh, Pittsburgh Brewing Company, Iron City, Iron City brand brewers uh, for, for years. Wow, so as you say, you got the brewmaster, you have that kind of expertise and you have a facility and, and hopefully you can, uh, you, you can make it work. So people should be able to find pumpkin ale right now or as we head into the pumpkin season? Well, it gets earlier and early each year <laughs> and you can go to your local retailer and your local on-premise establishment. It's been out for about a week and the good news for us is we are completely sold out of it, so the wholesalers have it and the retailers will have it for the next six to eight weeks. All right, very good. Look for it at, a, at, a, at an establishment near you. Brian Walsh, CEO of Pittsburgh Brewing. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next up, on the frontiers of luxury travel, right here in our region. We'll find out what's hot right after this. Stay with us.